Hello Aquarius. I was just doing a little song actually before um, I'm starting your reading. I was just sitting here with the camera off and I don't know why but I got the Muppets into my head and I was like Aquarius do 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 do. So I'm very happy to be doing your reading. I'm even singing about it. I know this is for October 2022. We're going to look at your love life. We're going to look at channeled messages. We're going to look at anything that needs to be said actually. This is for you if you are Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising or Venus. And we're going to start with a couple of cards for now. Kind of how you arrive in October. How do you arrive? What do we need to... Oh, very nice. What do we need to know about? Okay, where have you come from? How do you arrive? Oof. Oof. Strong cards. Okay, so it's a general reading. It won't resonate with everybody, but probably will resonate with quite a few. If it really resonates, if this is really your story, I do an extended reading for this and the link is below in the description box. We really have a good old dig into the cards that come up here. Okay, so see how it goes, see whether it resonates with you. Shall we have a look at the two cards? Two very different cards, okay? You are a story of contradictions, Aquarius. Let's put them there. And let's, you know, that devil deserves a little bit of looking at. Because he's got glitter in his hair. He's got glitter in his hair. Okay, so we've got the sun and we've got the devil. There's a certain darkness, obviously, to the devil card. And there is rapturous light with the sun card. So you arrive in October a little bit discombobulated, I think, Aquarius. Hit the like button if that is you, okay? Bing, 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 I'm discombobulated. We've got dark, we've got light. So some of you, it could be fire sign energy. So, um, God, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius. Some of you may be dealing with a Leo, Aries, Sagittarius or about to meet Leo, Aries, Sagittarius or maybe for some of you, there's a bit of it in your chart but mostly I think it's to do with the somebody else. Okay, for some of you, you are weighing up whether something is addictive and bad for you or someone is addictive and bad for you because we've got that lovely devil card or whether it's something that has a lot of potential. Okay, you've kind of got literally both cards on the table, haven't you? When we have the sun card, there's a lot of luck in your court and that's nice to know, okay? So I'll give you that one for free. There's a lot of luck in your court. Take that ball and that beach ball and play with it, okay? It's nice. Sun energy is radiance. It's good health. It's a feeling of vitality returning. Then we have this devil energy and this feels, ooh, it feels a bit difficult, it feels a bit complicated. It feels, I mean, you know, for God's sake, look at this. The arm is extended in invitation. The devil, of course, is always temptation. In some tarot decks, it's not called the devil, it's called temptation. I think uh, Tower of the Old Path, it's called temptation. So the hand is extended out, come hither, come with me experience my glittery hair. Wow. Hmm. And underneath though, we have the strings and there's always strings with the devil. Always strings attached with someone with their head in their hands. So there's something here about a person who might be mad, bad and dangerous to know or might be a little bit edgy that you're in a kind of relationship situation that just feels a bit edgy. You know, sometimes it's not that something, in fact, very rarely do we as humans get really troubled by something that's all good or all bad. Because if it's all good, we're like, hell yes. And if it's all bad, we're pretty much, what's in it for me? Nothing, okay, forget it then. It's when there is a kind of admixture of the two so it's a bit good, it's a bit bad, some days it's good, some days it's bad. Ooh, you know, I can't settle on 
what it is. I can't settle on how I feel about it. I can't settle on whether this person is a keeper or not. I can't settle on whether it's a relationship or not. Okay. Oof, I want to get some more cards out. A bit more silver tablecloth. Try not to take a picture of the floor. Hope to God I haven't left any like old laundry there or anything. Right, what do we need to know? What's going on, son and devil? What's this all about, please? Oof, my lovely hoo hoo Aquarians. Okay. Oof, didn't realise it was that. Mm hmm. Right. Gosh. Seven of Swords. Hmm. When we have the Devil next to the Seven of Swords, at the very least, we need to notice. Okay? We need to notice. Because, and I'm getting, honestly, it's so weird. I've had so many songs in my head with tarot readings. And of course, I was singing your little Aquarius song at the beginning. I'm getting Rebel Yell by Billy Idol in my head. Okay, in the midnight hour and all that kind of thing. So there is something for some of you, you know, trying to keep it a family friendly channel here. There is something just so hot about this. There's something just so damn tempting about it. It could be chemistry off the charts, but you know it's bad, you know, which is just so good. Or it could just be that this person is a bit like your kryptonite in some way. Their type or just what's going on between you is a bit like kryptonite. Seven of Swords is telling us we've got some full moon energy here and we do have a partial solar eclipse on the 25th of this month and we have a full moon lunar eclipse in November. I think it's around the 18th, but Google it and have a look. When you got the Seven of Swords, rest assured there is a lot for you to know here. There is a lot for you to discover and find out. And we are going to have a look. Okay, we're going to take some more cards. We're going to do some digging. We're going to have a look. Because there's something to know here. There's something to know. Full moon energy as well make sure you keep an eye on the moon cycles, okay? Full moons in this particular scenario are going to be relevant to you. They're going to be relevant to you. Okay. These cards feel quite close and secretive at the moment. I'm just getting there, you. You, 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 oh, oh, <laughs> righty ho. We've got the Queen of Wands in the reverse and we've got the Page of Pentacles. The Queen of Wands in reverse, for me as a tarot reader, every tarot reader has their own, like, special cards don't they queen of wands in reverse for me can be a karmic energy it can be a third party it can just be this interfering influence and because she's coming up next to that seven of swords oh who's in the background of your situation who is it there's something there's someone there's somebody just move these bad boys up a bit so we can get more cards in. More cards, I tell you, more cards, right. Next to the page of pentacles, what it's saying to you is, if there is competition here, or if you sense that there is competition here and you don't really know if there's competition here, wait it out. Don't act in particular because I don't think it will serve you in the best way. We always want to, we want to dive in there and ask and get to the bottom of things. It won't perhaps, you probably want to wait for revelation rather than go looking for it. And I know that's, 
<coughs> frustrating for some of you, of course. But timing is everything. Timing is everything, especially when there is some element of competition about it. Because honestly, if this is someone who's competing with you for someone or for something that you want, their timing's going to be pretty good. They know just when to put the boot in or just when to stir the pot, okay? Don't allow them to trigger you or don't allow it. This can also be like a situational thing. Don't allow the situation to trigger you either. You're going to have to be very together this month. It's going to require you to be your strongest and best self. And sometimes that's a big ask, isn't it? We're like, really? But it is, it's a big ask, but you can do it. You're up to the task. Okay. Down at the bottom, we've got the two of pentacles. Something needs to be adjusted. Maybe it's just the way you look at this situation, but for some of you as well, there's something about life needing to be tweaked. It can be, for example, if it was to do with work, it can be that you may need to work from home more or less or whatever it is. It's about moving around movable things. So if it's in a relationship, it's like maybe you need to live closer together, see each other more or less. Something physical or practical needs to be tweaked. Very interesting that you got the chariot. Chariot is the sun and the devil energy, the dark and the light, the light and the shade. You've got the two horses in the chariot here, Cancerian energy, so you may be dealing with Cancerian. You've got the two horses that are trying to go in different directions. It can represent, literally, you are the charioteer. This is the situation, this is your life, and you're like, oh my God, I want to go this way, I want to go that way. It seems to be hot, it seems to be cold, it seems to be up, it seems to be down. How the heck am I supposed to ride this? We always say this on my daily channel. How can I ride two horses with one ass? Well, the answer is with a chariot, okay? You're going to have conflict, conflicting feelings, conflicting people, competing influences and a big attraction, okay? And also the knowledge that there are things you don't yet know about the situation. And yet you've got to keep your show on the road. That's going to require good timing, self-control and a high degree of self-worth. You're good for it, Aquarius. You're good for it. Okay, what else do we need to know? What do we need to know about this Seven of Swords, for cripe's sake? Seven of Swords, Seven of Swords. What do we need to know about the Seven of Swords, please? Nice. Somebody wants a new start. Somebody wants to start over. If this is an ex, they want a new beginning with you. They want it to have never happened, whatever happened. For some of you, you may want a do-over. You may want to start over. Let's take another card. Where are we going with the full energy, the start over energy? I rather like the full energy. When you put the full and the sun together here, there's quite a lot of optimism for you with this. Page of Wands in reverse. Notice how the two reverse cards are kind of next to each other. Page of Wands in reverse is basically Page of Pentacles again. It's saying don't react quickly. Don't be fiery and hot-headed and passionate about it. This is going to be difficult because you're going to feel fiery and hot-headed and passionate. For some of you, you may discover that there is competition and competition tends to fire us up. If that's the case, you have to become the Queen of Wands. You have to tap in to your diva-like energy, okay? This is gonna require you to be, to do what my cat does, right? To do what Minnie does. 
when Minnie's little, she's only six months, so when she's in the garden and there's big cats, which there are, and they're all bigger than her, she makes herself big. The tail goes bog brush, you know, brrr, Minnie makes herself big. Seriously, most of the cats scarp her. They could beat the crap out of her if they wanted to, but she's big. She's made herself big and they believe her. In this situation, with this opposition or tension, you need to make yourself big, okay? Think to yourself, what would Minnie do? What would Minnie do? She would make herself big. Love it. Yes. Yes, a doodle do. We'll do some oracle cards in a minute as well. Star card, Aquarius energy. Yeehaw! What I love when I'm doing a reading for a particular star sign is when they get their own card. You get your own card, I'm going to drop it in the middle. I'm going to drop it in the middle because it's your powerhouse. Your powerhouse is being Aquarian. Be Aquarian about it. You're ruled by Uranus, the planet of surprises. You never really play by the rules as Aquarians anyway. And hook the star down for yourself. Hook that star down by making yourself big, by being brave, by being bold, by accepting competition as a natural part of life, okay? Accepting the challenge of riding two horses with one arse and plow forward, okay? This situation here with this devil card, with this seven of swords, is going to reveal itself around the time of full moons, around the time of eclipses, but it's slow to come to the surface, okay? Slow to come to the surface. Three of pentacles in the reverse. You don't need to work with others about this. You don't need to be friends with everybody either. I don't know what that message means for somebody, but I think it means something for somebody. You don't need to be friends, okay? You don't have to, just looking in my tarot cupboard, you don't have to be friendly to everyone about this. It's kind of plugged into a lot of Aquarians to be friendly. Let's do some Angel Answers cards. Oh, that's exciting. Just a second. I'm going in the cupboard, people. These are great because you can ask like direct questions now and I can answer them. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, I nearly dropped the whole computer thing. Right. We didn't know we were going to do this, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Right. Hang on. Aquarius. I'm sure I've raised some questions. So we're doing angel answers cards. What happens with these is I'm going to, you're going to have your question. Okay. We're going to do three of these. You're going to have your question, maybe about this situation, okay? And, woof. We probably won't need the book because I know these cards rather well, but we'll just, we might do so. We'll just put that over there. You can freeze it if you like while you think of the question. I'll give you a bit of time with each one and I will give you an angel answer. How do you like them apples? I'm liking them. Not done this for anyone else, but I might actually because I'm rather liking it. Okay. Oh. Aquarius, have your question ready. Okay. I imagine for most of you that this question is going to relate to this situation. But yeah, I'll give you a moment. Have your question ready. Pause it if you need to pause it. Oh. Okay, you ready for your answer? There's no need for you to worry about that particular aspect. When this comes up, it's not saying to you, oh, everything's gonna be okay. It's all glitter and unicorns and gorgeous, hurrah. You know, it's not that. What it's saying to you is, and this is a hard thing to do, but by God, does it work? It's a habit, worrying is a habit. You have the devil card, we have that addiction. 
Some of us are addicted to worrying because it makes us feel like things will turn out better if we worry enough about something. But usually the opposite is true. The situation that you're in, and do you remember we said this with the Seven of Swords? Instead of going looking for the answers, they need to be revealed to you. And that is not under your control. And worry is an attempt to control a situation. The more you attempt to control this situation, the more it will elude you, okay? So if you can park the worry bus, this will work really well for you. Choose not to worry. At first it will be difficult because the worry will come up, but just let them float away like clouds, okay? And just say, I'm choosing not to worry about it because I'm curious about that. That's it. Different results if you do that. Second question. What do we need to know? Second question. Okay. Do you have your second question ready? You can pause it. Okay. The answer, ooh, to the second question, unlikely. So whatever you're thinking, <coughs> excuse me, whatever you're thinking, wondering, it's unlikely to come to pass, okay? That is unlikely to come to pass. So you don't need, if you're focusing a lot of attention on this particular thing that you're asking a question about, it may be time to put your focus somewhere else. Maybe you're not noticing something else that is better than this or something else that is just different to this. I feel like for some of you, this is also something that you've wanted for a long time but don't really still know why you want. Okay, time to crack a fresh groove on that one, I think. Okay, third question, got such an itchy nose now. Third question. Have your question ready, pause it if you need to. Ooh. Okay, the answer to the third question here Meditation brings answers. So, not just any meditation brings answers. Um, you can meditate that. You can even do this in your home as well. So let's say it's like a walking meditation. Walk around your home and there'll be books somewhere, okay? Or maybe even magazines or something like that. Randomly open it, don't force anything. Look at the first thing you see and just let it soak, okay? You can also do this in meditation where you imagine you've gone into a library and it can be any kind of library that you like and you take down a book off the shelf and here is this thing that you read and it's the answer to the question you've been asking, okay? And it may help with that seven of swords and devil energy, okay? You can make up your own version of that because you're Aquarians and Aquarians are really good at making up things. And, you know, your imagination is good. Let's have a Whispers of Love card as well. In the extended, woof, I'm going to drop all my tarot cards now. In the extended, I'm going to look deeply at the Seven of Swords, the devil. I'm going to look at how your person feels, what are they up to, what are they doing? Do you need to know about that? And what do you need to know about that? Okay. We're going to dig, we're going to channel. We're going to get to the bottom of it. Let's have a Whispers of Love card. Oh. Okay. Actions speak loudly. Now this doesn't mean you're gonna go rush over to your person's house, grab a guitar and start composing them, you know, 
a song, um, singing a ballad, any of that kind of stuff. Your actions in your entire life speak loudly about love. How you look after yourself speaks about your own self-love. It tells the universe you're worth it. You feel you're worth it. They feel you're worth it. It comes back to you. All your actions must be making yourself big like Minnie in the garden, expressing love for yourself, not necessarily for the other person, expressing it for yourself to make yourself more attractive and magnetic and also just because you are. Rest and relaxation is essential. Looking after the body, looking after the mind, meditation. We all have a fundamental need to take breaks, particularly if you are really on a string about this person. You know, if they're really yanking your chain or the whole situation has really got you kind of tensing your jaw or whatever your particular tension area is. And we all have them, okay? Um, for Aquarians, I'm just thinking you're often quite in your head because your head ruled by you and there's lots of things going on. It can be quite overthinky sometimes. Rest, relax, meditate if you can, walk around the block, whatever it is for you. Take a bath. Something that just brings you down a little bit, brings the whole tension volume, the curiosity volume down a bit. What you need to know will be revealed, okay, um, in some really quite mysterious ways, but not probably through that kind of inquiry and overthinking. Aquarius, quite a reading for you. I'm going to go and do the extended reading now. Link will be below in the description box. Woof, really enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Namaste.